Not quite. Miss Bent, I want you to write a letter to the editor of the Boston Globe, inviting him to Brant Rock on Christmas Eve for a very special surprise. What will Mr. Walker and Mr. Given say? After today, my dear, it matters very little what they say. I've won, you see. Hey, Sparks. Aren't you going to join the party? Yeah. I got a message today from Brant Brock saying to listen in tonight at six for something special. Special what? I don't know. That's why I'm listening. That was a phonograph recording of Handel's Largo. We will now have a solo sung by one of our engineers, Mr. Stein, accompanied by me on the violin. <laughs> I must apologize. As it appears that Mr. Stein will be unable to perform for us this evening, so those of you who are listening to this transmission will have to be content with a violin solo by Reginald Fessenden. Hey, Rudy. Yeah. Hey, you guys, come and listen to this. I would like to end this transmission with those inspiring words from the Bible. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men of goodwill. We will be transmitting again one week from tonight on New Year's Eve. In the meantime, Merry Christmas, everyone. From United Fruit Company Steamship Carolina in Caribbean waters, entire transmission received with great clarity. Only regret failure of Mr. Stein to perform. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Penel. Very good, Professor. Congratulations, Professor. An incredible demonstration. You know, we've been hearing about transmitting the human voice for some time now, and you're the one who pulled it off. Yes, well, I hope someone will point that out to Mr. Marconi. Well, people will soon forget Marconi. Sitting in their living rooms, listening to music and voices coming out of thin air... The name of Fessenden is going to make the front pages of newspapers all over the world. Excuse me, sir, but just to set the record straight, I should point out that the music was merely a novelty to attract attention. The future of this invention lies in the telephone industry. We're out to compete with Graham Bell. Mr. 
Walker. Surely that's what we've been after. Can we take him to the cat doctor? It's in every newspaper in the country. He's awful sick. What difference does that make? It's still publicity for the company. I'll talk to your father as soon as he's off the telephone. Very well. Yes, first thing in the morning. Preposterous. We've caught the imagination of the world and Walker and Gibbons are furious. There's nothing for it. I'll have to find the capital to buy them out. Reg, there's something the matter with Mike. Hmm. What's the matter with him? He's very sick, Father. Please do something. Mike? Hey there, old puss. Can we take him to the doctor? Right away, Ken. Then I have to catch a train to Pittsburgh. <laughs> Miss Flint, it's Helen Fessenden calling from Brant Rock. Could I speak with my husband, please? I'm sorry he's not here. We're expecting him, but he hasn't arrived yet. Oh, dear. May I speak with Mr. Walker, then? I'm sorry he's not here, either. I, I have to talk to somebody right away. A man came with an order to remove all the professor's papers and documents and ship them to Pittsburgh. They're carrying them out right now. I'm afraid I don't know anything about that, but I'll give the professor your message the moment he arrives. Goodbye, Mrs. Fessenden. Miss... Oh, dear God. Where is Reg? No, gentlemen. You may wind up the company only on condition that you pay me $330,000 for my patents as for our original agreement. You forget we own 55% of the stock. You don't tell us. We tell you. What I do not forget is that I have worked for the company for six years, and during that time I have contributed over 150 patents. For which you have been handsomely paid. What? $300 a month. Well, I'm afraid it's perfectly clear, Professor, that we could not reach agreement in this matter. So it looks like Mr. Given and I will have to proceed as we see fit. And I, sir, will have to resort to my own recourse in order to protect my position. Good day, gentlemen. Reginald Aubrey Fessenden? Yes. I hereby serve you with an injunction made on this date by the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania enjoining you to cease and desist from any further participation in the affairs of the National Electric Signaling Company and prohibiting you physical access from all the company's said properties, with particular reference to the company's wireless station at Brant Rock, Massachusetts. I presume you have no objection to my returning to collect my family and my few personal possessions. You know me well enough to have learned I do not easily give up when faced with problems. I assure you, my determination to transmit the human voice will seem a mere whim compared to my dedication to seeing you both in hell. Anything so desolate. You're right, my dear. It always was a dreary place. But cheer up. I'm sure once we're back in Canada, we'll find something much grander, much more suited to us. Oh, Reg, I didn't mean that. Take those last few bags out, Ken. There's a good fella. Yes, Father. 
Aha! They missed these. What's that? Why? My drawing for the turbine-driven electric motor for ships. And look here. An amplifier for musical instruments. Where the fortune of it's properly exploited. There's enough work here to keep me out of mischief indefinitely. You will never be out of mischief, Reginald Fessenden. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is it, Father? We're starting afresh, Ken. What better way to start than with laughter, eh? Come on, let's get on with it. The court battles that followed lasted 20 years. In the end, Reginald Fessenden won everything, except 